Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I want to show you how you can make your own custom luminosity masks on any part of your image for really advanced and intricate editing. We're going to take a really deep dive into a tool that's kind of hidden in Photoshop. So you're going to want to stick around for this one. So if we look at our before, what I really wanted to do here was brighten up the tips of the water, but only make it happen on the tips of the water. So here's the before, here's the after. I was able to make a really intricate selection of just that area by using a really cool tool. Let's go ahead and hop in, I'll tell you all about it. So I want to show you something pretty cool today. I want to show you how you can make a selection of anything. And when we talk about a selection, I'm kind of talking about your own luminosity masks made of things that you select in Photoshop. It's a very cool technique to get really down into the nitty gritty on something that you want selected. So in this photograph, I really want these white sweeping uh, motion of the water to be selected. Uh, the problem is I could go into a mask and I could maybe make a curves adjustment layer to brighten those up and then mask them out with a paintbrush, but that gets kind of sloppy. I could do a dodge and burn and maybe uh, dodge those areas, but that gets kind of sloppy too because it's based on my pen. So what I'm going to do is with my background layer selected, we're going to go to select and we're going to go to color range. It's important that I tell you to select that background layer because if you had any other layers in your palette, it would make a selection of all of those other things too. So um, let's say you had like a curves adjustment layer or a mask selected, it would make a selection of that object. So you want to make sure you're making a selection of the true object that you want. So we have here is the color range. We can make a color range selection from our reds, from our yellows, our greens, um, highlights, midtones, just about anything we want on this image. If I select sampled colors, that is going to make a selection of areas that I select. So I get to use a a point dropper here and start selecting around my image. So before I make you dizzy, I want to break down exactly what's happening with this. It's basically looking at the luminance values of the area I select and giving me a mask of anything that is roughly in the same color range of that object I've selected. So if I select a big swatch of blue, it's going to select all the blue in the image, not just that one little spot. So this is a way that you can create some really interesting luminosity masks to help you in your workflow. And they're actually really quick and extremely effective. So let's break down this little panel here. We already looked at here. We want the sampled colors here. You have this thing called fuzziness, where if you increase this and decrease this, that shows you how big or how small your selection is going to be. And how do we know what our selection is going to be? Well, right here, I have my selection preview set as grayscale. So anything white is going to be my selection. Anything black is not going to be my selection. I can change that to a black mat. So now we see my selection on top of a black surface. Whatever is black is not going to be selected, and it's showing you all of the colors on top of that. Not very effective for this image. The white mask is kind of effective for this image, but the only problem here is that if I was selecting something white, um, it would be white on white, and that's not very good either. And then we have our quick mask, which is just a, a, like a red kind of haze, which is kind of difficult to see. I like to do my selection in grayscale here. On your selection pane here, you can either have it show you what your selection is, or you can have it on your image. So you can click anywhere on here and start to get a preview of what your selection is going to be based off of what you're clicking on this little small little thing for your window there, okay? So I told you I want to get that sweeping water, so I'm going to click somewhere where I see that sweeping water, which would be right here. If I change this to none, so no selection preview, and then I click here, that'll also give me my selection too, and then I can change it back to grayscale if I want to look at it on a bigger scale rather than this little teeny tiny window pane. So the other thing we need to talk about is localized color clusters. If I click this option, it's going to open up this range adjustment here. Right now the range is set to 100%. So what it's what this is telling Photoshop is select this color, but any colors that are close to that color in that same selection. So if I drop this range down, you're going to see that it's now like a spotlight. So this is good for selective color. I know everyone hates that word, but let's say you want to make a certain area in your image have a little less saturation than the rest of the image in just that one spot. So you select that color, it selects the whole selection, but now you can minimize it and say, you know what, I don't really want you to affect my whole image. I just want you to affect this one little small portion. It's kind of like a mask built into this selection. Okay, so we'll bring that up to 100% because I want to show you something else. 
Over here, you have different tools. You have a plus eyedropper and a minus eyedropper. The plus eyedropper, if you select that, it's going to allow you to add more points to your selection. But I will tell you this, if you press shift, it's gonna give you the uh, eyedropper to give you the plus also. So while you have the regular eyedropper for any selections that you wanna make, like this one right here, you can then press plus uh, or shift for that plus eyedropper to add more points. So let's talk about the range here now that we have two points selected. If we drop this range down, you'll see that it's now two spotlights. This is one selection, this is the other selection. Using this range adjustment with the localized color clusters is a great way for you to know just exactly the spots that you pinpointed as selections for your image. So I could click this one, now you see that point appear there too. And I can increase those range adjustments and maybe just take that localized color cluster off completely because I don't need it at this point. The localized color cluster is good if you just want to spotlight in on one or if in this case, two of your points. So now with my fuzziness here, I can select how big I want that range to be. Now this really looks like a big, strong luminance mask. But what that's telling us is that all of this white stuff is going to be a mask. So I'm gonna drop that down to about here, okay? And if I press Alt, that will remove any points. So if I go to that localized color cluster and I press Alt on this one right here, it will go ahead and remove that area that I, that I didn't really want selected anyway because when we go back here and we do our fuzziness, I just want these sweeping uh, points of water plus maybe some of the highlights, the highlighted tips on the water back here. And I'll press OK and show you what this does. It's now giving me racing ants all over my image for what my selection is. If I go down here and make a curves adjustment layer, notice that my selection is now on a curve. That is some powerful stuff. But as I said, I only want that to be the sweeping motions of the water plus the tips of the water. So I'm gonna use the brush tool, press B for the brush tool, D for the default colors, and X to switch them over to black, and paint this area out. Basically, I just switched over to a black brush to paint this stuff out so that this stuff doesn't get selected up here. So now I can bump this up and say, okay, I want you to be a little bit brighter. Just bump that up and make all that area just a little bit brighter in that one specific spot of my photograph. So now that one spot on my image is now a little bit brighter than the rest of my photograph. It doesn't really look that great now because if you see the way it's applying itself, it's also getting some of the midtones. So I want to implore you to start using your blend if principles with this. So if we double click here, we're now adding another level of essentially luminance channels on top of this. It doesn't look good because it's applying itself pretty harsh to the midtones also. So if I move this down and over, it's going to start protecting those areas and then I can press alt or option and split that and kind of feather that in. So we get a nice feathered look to the brightening of the tops of that water. If I drop that opacity a little bit, now we're starting to see how it's getting a little bit better there. We now have those tips of that water highlighted. I can use my brush to maybe brush some of this stuff out too. All right, so now those tips of that water is nicely highlighted because we've used two levels of luminance, not just a selection, but also using blend if on top of that selection. One of the things that's really cool is in the Zone System Express, you're gonna see in the color pane right here, we have a eyedropper. Well, guess what that eyedropper does? That eyedropper brings you right into the sampled colors or color range here so that you can make any selection you want of your background layer of your image. And once you make that selection and press OK, it's automatically going to give you a curves adjustment layer like you see right here, it says custom color range with some blend if principles applied. And what the beauty of this is that it also incorporates all of the Zone System Express protection measures on your mask. So you get all the luxuries of the zones essentially, but in a um, custom selection. So you're basically making your own zones. So I showed you how to make your own zones on your own. And then I also showed you that in the Zone System Express, we have our custom zone selection. So the basic idea here is that you want to get more intricate uh, selections on your image so that you can make more accurate adjustments on your photograph rather than just hitting all of one spot of your image. It's a really effective way to kind of make your own uh, luminosity masks on your photographs. So you could basically see how you could break down an entire image by making point selections on different curves adjustment layers and have a lot of control over just those very specific areas. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. And please, if you haven't done so already, subscribe because I do tutorials like this all the time and they're free for you on F64 Academy. And there's some premium stuff over on F64 
for Elite. So beyond all these cool little tips and tricks that I show you here in Photoshop, we get really down into, into the, uh, the fine art of things. And there's courses and critique sessions and all kinds of great stuff on F64 Elite. Again, thank you very much for watching this. I really do appreciate your time. Thank you.